I'm coming home Biden takes a tour of his Irish heritage. President Biden climbed the stone stairs of an ancient castle in the Republic of Ireland on Wednesday and paused to look out toward an iron-gray Irish sea, where his maternal great-great-great-grandfather set sail for America in 1849. On the ground, bagpipers puffed out an original song, called a Biden return, to celebrate the 80-year-old's latest visit to his motherland. Irish rain drizzled down the president's baseball cap. In other words, this was peak Joe Biden. It feels wonderful Mr. Biden shouted down from the castle toward a group of reporters. It feels like I'm coming home. Mr. Biden's ancestral tour began after a blink of an eye trip to Belfast, Northern Ireland, earlier in the day to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, a peace accord that brought an end to sectarian violence in the region. But neither Mr. Biden nor his senior advisors were interested in discussing the ongoing political fray in Northern Ireland or any other global matters, including the war in Ukraine. Instead, the president trained his gaze on the past specifically, his Irish heritage, which has shaped his public identity and political outlook. The Irish are the only people in the world, in my view, who are actually nostalgic about the future, Mr. Biden said. Think about it. It's because, more than anything in my experience, hope is what beats in the heart of all people, particularly in the heart of the Irish. Hope. Every action is about hope. Mr. Biden came here wanting to learn more about his ties to the Finnegan and Blewett families, his maternal clan from County Louth and County Mayo, whose descendants settled near Scranton, Pa. Ballina and County Mayo, Mr. Biden pointed out on Wednesday, is a sister city of Scranton those Finnegans and Blewitts raised a future American president on a steady diet of family lore, Irish poetry and a scrappy sense of pride remember, Joey, the best drop of blood in ya is Irish, he said his grandfather told him as a child. His family identity has been central to his legacy, but it has also, at times, been his biggest political vulnerability. Hunter Biden, the president's 53-year-old son, whose financial dealings are the subject of a House Oversight Committee investigation, traveled to Ireland with his father aboard Air Force One, even as prominent Republicans in the United States criticized the president for taking the trip in the first place. In an interview on Fox News on Tuesday night, former President Donald J. Trump accused his successor of not paying attention to the world's problems. The world is exploding around us, Mr. Trump claimed. You could end up in a third world war and this guy is going to be in Ireland. If the criticism reached Mr. Biden, he did not let it show. During the days leading up to the trip, the White House fielded several questions about who would be traveling with him, for how long and at what cost. Officials said that Mr. Biden was maintaining the tradition of presidents, from Kennedy to Obama, who had made similar trips before. In the end, Mr. Biden kept the family contingent lean compared to the group that accompanied him on his six-day tour of Ireland as vice president in 2016, according to aides. In County Louth back then, Mr. Biden toured the Kilwira Church and Cemetery, where some of his ancestors were baptized and stopped for lunch with relatives, including several grandchildren, at Fitzpatrick's restaurant and pub. He visited Lily Finnegan's pub, which, officials said, was owned by some distant relatives at one point. One notable Biden was missing this time Jill Biden, the first lady, who stayed behind because she had to teach, according to Elizabeth Alexander, her communications director. Dr. Biden does not always attend Biden family outings, including her husband's 2016 visit. As Mr. Biden left Washington for the latest trip, he told reporters he had decided to take two of my family members who hadn't been there before. Quat. The president's sister, Valerie Biden Owens who did visit Ireland with Mr. Biden in 2016 also made the trip. Brother and sister are so proud of their Irish heritage that, when Mr. Biden was a candidate for vice president, Ms. Biden Owens lobbied the Secret Service on his behalf to change its protocol for code names for the people it protects. Mr. Biden's was supposed to start with K, but his sister persuaded officials to use one that nodded to his Irish heritage Celtic. For President Biden, Ireland is not just a place where his ancestors lived it is deeply ingrained in his identity, said Sheila Murray, a former senior advisor to Mr. Biden. His Irishness is interwoven alongside his faith, his fierce devotion to his family and his empathy for people who are struggling. On Wednesday, Ms. Biden Owens and Hunter trailed the president as he toured a firehouse, a pub in a deli. At one point, Hunter held an umbrella to shield his father from the rain. At an earlier meeting with U.S. Embassy workers, he told Mr. Biden, you're supposed to do the rope line, Dad, a reference to supporters who had lined up to greet the president. I'm supposed to do the rope line? His father asked. Just to say hi to everybody, Hunter replied. To get to return as president and see the warm response from the people of his family's homeland probably feels like a powerful full-circle moment for the Bidens, Kate Bedingfield, Mr. Biden's former communications director, said in a message. Hunter, Mr. Biden's sister, Distant relatives and friends joined the jamboree through the Irish countryside as Mr. Biden's motorcade traveled from Dublin to Dundalk. At Carlingford Castle in County Louth, 
The president took a tour with the former professional rugby player Rob Carney, his fifth cousin once removed, and with Michael Martin, the Minister for Foreign Affairs and Minister of Defence of Ireland. Perhaps no modern president has embraced his Irish-American lineage as enthusiastically as Mr. Biden. You know who designed the White House? An Irishman he said proudly in remarks at Ulster University in Belfast earlier in the day. Pride in his heritage has been instilled in him since his childhood, when his father, Joseph R. Biden Sr., experienced financial hardship and moved the family into his maternal grandfather's house one crowded with Finnegans and Bluets. They were faithful, proud Catholics, and practiced grudge holders. In his memoir, Mr. Biden wrote that one of his aunts approached him and told him that their dislike for his father was not personal. Your father's not a bad man, Mr. Biden wrote that his Aunt Gertie told him. He's just English, but he's a good man. As president, Mr. Biden has used a humble moniker to sign letters, calling himself one son of Catherine Eugenia Biden, a reference to a mother who instructed her Catholic son never to kneel to the Queen of England. At different points on Wednesday, Mr. Biden indulged in a type of lore specific to him long-winded and sometimes rose-colored memories of the Senate. When a child asked what was the key to success, Mr. Biden recounted for several minutes how as a young senator he had recoiled from the views of Senator Jesse Helms, who he said was not very crazy about African Americans. He said he later learned it was important not to question people's motives when he found out that Mr. Helms had adopted a child with special needs. If you question their motive, then you never get to be able to agree, Mr. Biden said. The next person asked how the presidential dogs are doing. Doing well, Mr. Biden replied. There is only one presidential dog the president ended his day in the wood panel dining room of the Windsor Bar and Restaurant in Dundalk, surrounded by distant relatives. As he spoke, he asked Hunter to stand for a round of applause. When you're here, Mr. Biden said, looking around the room, you wonder why anyone would ever want to leave. Quad.